for me it kind of chose me most people that wanted to enter the industry usually want to be actors first which i think alarms anyone i talk to about it is that i was 14 when i did it i went to bhansali productions i actually assisted jasmeet reen and my mom actually who has been very crucial in my career she will come back many many <laughs> times our favorite project was also the most uh, prestigious project i think which is for google india I'm very much an artist who is an entrepreneur not an entrepreneur who is an artist I I feel like I gaslighted myself a little bit in the sense of like ah uh, it's like a fluke or something want a filmography within which if there can be some awards great <laughs> but I want to be that person who's made 10 15 things you watched and not just that one I was a little bit starstruck on day 1 and then I got into my mode by day 2 Hello everyone, welcome to the Brave and Unknown podcast. We love to talk shop, uncover the beauty of failures, and play a few games. Today we have with us Priyanka Banerjee, the founder of Leo Girl Productions. Priyanka, how are you feeling? Good. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Priyanka, your path right out of college has always been geared towards advertising, screenwriting, directing, and producing. After interning at James Walt Thompson and Bansari Productions, you jumped head on by starting your own production house, Leo Girl Productions. So is that A good description of the journey so far. Yeah, pretty much. I think so. Cool, and we are here today because of your world production. So we're going to play yeah. a quick little game to understand a little more about it. So we're going to play the Twitter bit challenge. Twitter is known for its 280 character limit on every tweet, which sometimes makes it a little difficult to convey your thoughts. It takes about 20 seconds to speak 280 characters. So we want to transfer this challenge to you to explain to us your world productions in 20 seconds. Oh, we won't make it easy. We also want you to use one emoji and one hashtag in your tweet. Oh God! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a stopwatch for you. Oh God! Okay, cool. And you can start in three. <laughs> okay, good. Two. One go. Okay, so Leo Girl is a boutique film and theater production company that empowers brands to be able to use the power of narrative storytelling to build their brand and to build their employer brand, um, with a specialization in diversity and inclusion. Uh, hashtag Leo Girl and emoji is the film emoji. Okay. One one over. <laughs> It's okay. You can you can cut me that. Okay. That's fine, <laughs> but yeah, no. You, I think you gave a very holistic description of like everything that I do. So yeah, okay. So let's let's dive right in. Um, it seems from your at least from digitally from what we've been able to grasp, yeah. very early on in your journey, you know what you want to do, and one is that true? And if yes, what led you to it? Yeah, I think that's very accurate because for me, it kind of chose me. uh i don't think i chose it you wow. know like sometimes i know it sounds very i mean i'm speaking to an artist so there's going to be a lot of abstract things here compared to uh, business people but i do think it chose me because i think it was the only thing i really showed talent for but i think it was also in a very like you know when we talk about a flow state and stuff like that i feel like i started to experience those things from like a very young age when i would do anything that's performance related or literature related or like the humanities was a very safe space for me from the start so because for me storytelling was always an area of like comfort from a very young age and then when i grew older i was experiencing movies then plays and i was like oh okay you can actually make a profession out of this and i think the first um, access point that we get to movies is you know seeing stars and we all most people that wanted to enter the industry usually want to be actors first because yeah. as a child that's the first thing you understand and then as you grow a little older you're like oh there's a whole group of cool people behind the camera who make the actor look the way they look to you yeah. on screen and then you discover that okay i want to be a storyteller i want to be that person and that's how it was for me yeah and i mean storytelling makes a lot of sense right you work in advertising and theater of the team yeah what was that like? because see the thing is if you get into advertising that that is an industry of its own absolutely um coming back into production after going into advertising is still slightly um less common because once you get into advertising there's a career path there's yeah. a ladder to climb right so why didn't you want to continue in that area yeah So one thing about the JWT internship which I think alarms anyone I talk to about it is that I was 14 when I did it. So I was in 9th grade. Yeah, I had that kind of mom who was like wow. you're not going to spend any summer 
at home <laughs> like you have to go intern somewhere so it was really one of those situations where actually she had been the hr head of lolin jazz uh, in india a few years ago and then she of course had advertising contacts so she's like you know what like we will try and send you over to an agency because she said what are you interested in i said i'd like to write or do something like that and so um, you know at the time uh, i remember tarun singh chahan who's a really good friend of my mom's and became a sort of mentor for me also he was at jwt at the time and he was part of their senior leadership and he said okay come over and i think everyone was very confused about what to do with this 14 year old because there were there were people in like official internships there but they were 18 19 they were in college like it made a little more sense that they were there so i think initially people like there was a lot of just me sitting around and waiting for someone to give me something and then when they figured that okay she has some potential we can give her something to do and she won't you know like screw it up um and then i did that so that's, that's how to have that at 14 is your i mean i don't know how cool it was because back then i was like what am i doing and all these people are so much in terms of at the age of 19 and i was for the whole club so Yeah, but I made friends, and you know, actually credit to them because when I became eighteen, nineteen, I don't know how many fourteen-year-olds I could have hung out with and actually treated as an equal. Yeah, and I felt a lot of the people I met there did that, so that was amazing. But that was only one part of it because then the other internships I did, like when I went to Bhansali Productions, I actually assisted Jasmeet Reen, the director who made Darlings, if you guys know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that has Alia Bhatt and yeah. Shefali Shah so she eventually directed that but she was going to do a totally different film which was supposed to be produced by um Bansali and you know we were working on that in the sense i was assisting her and i spent a year doing that when i was like 18 19 years old so that happened many years later so i think when i did jwt i had no sense of okay i want to be in advertising it was just that let's do all kinds of internships and understand how it works and uh, definitely my takeaway was that these are like a bunch of really creative cool people and they kind of build their like they have their own rules of how they work they don't subscribe to the usual corporate culture yeah. which is what i loved about um, advertising and i continue to love that even when i now deal with agencies as a client or you know like in the sense that now i am the director they speak to right a lot of agencies so you make ads for them yeah absolutely that is like a big part of what leo girl does because that is our digital ads wing that produces ads and for that we are often in touch with agencies or in touch with brands directly either of that or there's a different part of it where they just engage with me as a director Correct. without yeah. bringing in my production company so now there's a lot of engaging with agencies also but in a totally different light like i mean and, and that's that's also really cool but i have a fondness for it because of that experience at 14 you know so yeah. it's like the first thing that you were exposed to as well yeah and that also holds like totally. some level of yeah. value in terms of okay. how you do that like the rest of your part yeah yeah okay. yeah Uh, so yeah, diving into your girl productions, then okay. um, as you mentioned, it focuses a lot on diversity and inclusion. Um, so, why did you think that was like an important aspect to address in your filmmaking career? Yeah. Um, okay. So that was also kind of accidental because I. uh you know kind of so the way i'll tell you the way the very first play came about because for a very long time we only did plays and that made us um i would say more of a theater group than a company because the thing that with plays is it's not very scalable you can't you know go and uh, you know kind of start a company that only does theater plays because there is so much infra required around the play that is not something that can be done very easily and it's also live event right in that sense so there's that as well basically the way it started is that i was in um school studying ib theater and my mom actually who has been very crucial in my career she will come back many many <laughs> times um she actually needed a small play to be done like a skit for like a women leadership event that they were having at an at a totally different company and she said hey you like theater why don't you and your drama teacher like put something together and th- these are like my ideas and she actually had a script and she was like could you put this up and so i said okay fine and i did it and actually at that event there were a lot of people from other companies who came in and this is very luckily around the same time in like 2014 where you know diversity and inclusion was beginning to become a conversation in corporate india and they were all realizing from their headquarters you know various mncs from their um, you know kind of upper leadership abroad or whatever they were realizing that you know we have to do something about this this has to become like a mandate it has to be part of our budget and they some of these companies came for that play and they were like hey this is a great medium to 
do something innovative and different where whether it's a women's day or a you know inclusion month or whatever you're celebrating let's have a play performance and then we can and the way we positioned it is it's a performance followed by a discussion so it's not just a play um and at the time i just did it as a one off but then about a few months later i remember johnson and johnson coming and saying that hey would you do this for us and i was still in college so it was not something i could see as like a for profit company like i didn't have the vision for it i just said okay cool and my mom had a not for profit at the time that did a lot of work in the hr community so she said okay we'll just bill for it through this because i didn't even have like an established company or anything right at like 19 or whatever so um literally all the way like through my college years i just did it as a fun thing where i just went to whoever called us and went and did the plays it wasn't like a thought out thing that okay you know i'm passionate about diversity and inclusion so i'm going to set up a business plan and start reaching out to clients and taking this to people because it was such an experiment i mean you don't know whether this is something a service people even need you know it's like as and when the requirement came i went and did it but definitely along the way i developed a passion for it as a theme and it started opening up into many other things so i think when we say diversity and inclusion the first thing a layman thinks of is women or gender diversity but there are so many aspects of it right and that started coming to me as i worked more and more. so yeah yeah interesting how like something that you did in college ended up then becoming something that you did in yeah, and how totally. that also grew with how yeah. you grew as well yeah and it helped us build so many relationships with so many companies right the if the eventual foot in the door the initial foot in the door was the play yeah and then you'd be like okay yeah. do you guys also need corporate films do you need ads do you need other things because you've just now built a relationship and you can do much more yeah. with them so this one come back to diversity and inclusion right? yeah. it's not an easy conversation because right that world itself is evolving every day right? as the context of what diversity and inclusion meant in 2014 very right? different to what it is today absolutely and i think An ad that captures that. Uh, one of the ads that I know that captures it is Tanishq Superwoman. Right. You know that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So Seen it. do you know it? So basically, the ad is about how Superwoman, which was initially meant to be a compliment for for a, for a mother who can work her job and still come home and still take care of do the it all, yeah, then still take care of the house and like basically do it all, right? It's a compliment, but basically over time it became an expectation, yeah. and it's just pressure. It's like unnecessary pressure. everyone needs to be the super person in their life but yeah. anyway so it was kind of like i feel like and tanish is time and time time and time again done a pretty good job of like taking the conversation to an even higher level yeah but it's not something that's easy to do I'm, i still see ads every day that get it so wrong and yeah. yeah luckily now they do get called out to some yeah. extent but It's so have you felt the difficulty yeah. in like creating a conversation given your focus on uh, yeah so you know to kind of explain it see our company now as of 2024 has three different wings right there's theater for learning which is diversity and inclusion related theater followed by discussion which is for corporates um there's corporate films which is internal communication for corporates and then there's ads so in each of these you know the nuance is very different because i feel like in theater for learning and corporates which is mainly targeted at companies trying to talk to their own employees i feel like that narrative is very um careful in its own way because it's one blast communication that's going out to 2000 people 3000 people at one time so they have to be when they're making a film it's definitely like that right because it goes on their intranet or on yeah, their portal yeah. or whatever so they have to say something that's all and en- encompassing like for example i've had some companies that look at every possible diversity with us but they don't look at lgbt sensitization because at you know until a couple of years ago it wasn't legal right so they were like even though this is a diversity we personally feel for we can't talk about it at a company level because it's not become legal in the country right and then there were some who said that we don't care what the legality is outside we want to talk to our employees about it because this is an mnc and in our other uh, locations this is a conversation so we want to have that so with every you know company it's so different and you have to you know figure out uh, you know what is their level 
you have to kind of keep benchmarking yourself against the yeah community. totally and and, and 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 sadly i will say that the indian organizations however large they are this is still an issue they are a bit squeamish about like the yeah. whole lgbt thing right so they'll talk about women they'll talk about persons with disability they'll talk about all those others but this is one where they're like we're not quite sure our senior leadership is ready for this conversation or certain people are ready for this conversation or whatever or you know so that is where you have to kind of bring in some tact and be like okay even if they're having they're going this much of the mile let's go at least this much with them you know you let's not then, then they'll go more afterwards. yeah and we've seen that happen with clients of us but in, initially they were like let's not go there and then they're like okay cool let's let's go there you know um so it's stuff like that and then with ads which are more to like the general public and the general consumer there i think you get a chance to be a lot more woke a lot more authentic you get to say what you really want to say because that's to the average public and you know with the average public i, I tend to see that of course brands are very careful they won't just say anything but there is the more you want to push the envelope they actually like that because it will make them stand apart i think i've experienced that with companies we've made ads for where uh they don't want to say anything dangerous but they want to say it in a way that's new and different and that gives you a chance to be creative you know so yeah yeah i think and uh, brands also tend to uh, tend to want to go like to a certain extreme as well right like for that yeah. conversation to start yeah like um i heard this like recently where it's like um getting cancelled is also like pr yeah yeah <laughs> so you sometimes are intentionally doing something that's yeah. I guess against inclusion and diversity, so people yeah. talk about it right. and they get that kind of PR. So yeah. it's like a mix of both, but no one wants to stay in between. Like it's yeah. the either extremes. Um, but yeah, you worked with like a few amazing um, brands like Nike, Google India, Bumble, um, Aditya Birla, and many more. I think you also worked with WWE. I worked for them in London. Oh, cool! Like, so, yeah. We did a play for them. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Wow. Yes, yeah, so like a lot of cool brands. Um, so which is like your favorite project uh, to work on, and why? Our favorite project was also the most uh, prestigious project, I think, which is for Google India. Oh, we did, Google. yeah, <laughs> because I think it's like I mean, who doesn't want to work for Google? You know, like I think anyone from like a vendor to I, I think most employees, everyone says that they have a really great time with these. really big ones because yeah. i think what happens is that they they're at a level where they can't afford to give anyone a bad experience at any level so yeah. they were i mean i'll tell you what we did for them uh, so we basically did a 50 minute virtual keynote event which basically is like a 50 minute film that you're creating for them in the pandemic which was called women will so it was basically a like a women's day sort of 50 minute thing that they wanted to do that featured everyone from sundar pichai to ratan tata to smriti irani to everyone was a part of that right and we shot with some people virtually with some people i mean it was the pandemic so you couldn't really go and shoot with everyone in person but uh, with sundar pichai there was like a remote uh, you know kind of conversation with his team and he has his own team of course to shoot everything <laughs> he does he doesn't need us but still i mean yeah. that was a cool experience but the greatest i think most gratifying part of working with them is that they will do a lot of homeworks to select you as the vendor for something once they've done that they fully trust you yeah they are then there's no questions then there's no interference it's very like you're the expert you do it the way you want to do it and with us i mean you know my team is all fairly young people these are not people who've been in the i mean i myself am young so they, you know there's yeah. i mean when they even talking to you they can see that it's someone in their 20s they're dealing with it's not like you know someone who's seasoned or anything but they don't have that you know they trust what you're saying and if they've selected you it's like okay now we want to do it with you um of course there was an agency involved and we didn't directly go and pitch to them but still you know like they want to trust their choice then which i think uh, was the best part of it because we had such a massive thing to deliver and it could have really gone or i if we constantly had a client like second guessing us they're, they're yeah. not insecure which i love you know it's very it's very freeing environment in which you can be creative yeah yeah i mean so for me at least like i know this being part of the advertising world that uh, there are a select few companies out there that yeah the ATC director of production house by where is the freedom, freedom director yeah. so like all these um like it like working with all these like it's all going to maintain that you know we don't kind of monitor them too much yeah. and you can see that in the work that eventually comes out right like there is it is creative going yeah absolutely crazy right and even with google like all the way 
think the first ad I remember of Google is Google Reunion, which was hmm. probably the biggest campaign they've had even till date, right. I presume. Right. So it, it is so cool for you to have like come into that ecosystem. And even if you didn't work with Sundar Pichai or his team directly, yeah. it was still so cool to like. Yeah, 100 percent. I think even uh, see some of these faces on our monitor, editing them, being yeah. like, you know, this is really cool that we have anything to do with these people. Like that, that part is always exciting. And everyone who worked on it was so like, oh my god, you know, like from the editor to everybody was like, no, you feel like you're doing something important, you know. 100%. And everyone wants to do their best. So that was our best experience. I mean. When you work with a brand at that level, and you know, it's obviously a very important. Project for them as well if they're getting the likes of Lakhan Tata Sundar Pichai. Yeah. How do you, after completing that project, continue to get value from it? Like, how do yeah. you, like referrals, adding to a portfolio, etc.? Like, what are the different ways in which you pull out that value? Yeah, yeah. This is honestly something I had to learn because I was so used to, I told you earlier, right? This thing of people just come to you and I had a very passive, um, you know, <laughs> po you know, kind of. Uh, approach to BD. It was very like, whenever you come to me, I'll work. If you don't come to me, then I guess too bad. <laughs> you know, it was that. And I had to realize because I'm very much an artist who is an entrepreneur, not an entrepreneur who is an artist, you know. So for me, I never envisioned being a businesswoman or anything like that. When some, like when you guys come and tell me we want to talk about Leo Girl, if anyone comes and tells me I would like to talk about your company, I'm like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> because for me, I'm very, there is a company and oh, that, you know, like, because these are all things that were very like by default that I had to figure out a GST and a this and a that it was all very yeah. like to, to it's a means to an end not that it was not my dream so it's stuff that I've had to kind of uh, you know wrap my head around yeah so because I don't have this active process I didn't until quite recently have an active process of BB I did kind of I would let it go and then I'd be like a few months later that was a great client that they had a great experience with us why don't I reach out and ask if there's something else um, and then I just made it a weekly thing so I was like every Wednesday I'm going to reach out to as many as I can without seeming desperate or weird <laughs> and, and just be like is there anything we can do and you know at first or, or with some of them just like can we catch up can we talk how are you what is up what is happening uh, that was a very awkward thing to do initially because it comes across like it comes across ingenuine, yeah. like you're trying to get something out of them. And it's, and I don't like that. I mean, I, I, I've connected with the person while working, right? So now I don't want to keep badgering you to give me work. But that one call that you make, right, just to be like, what's happening? Tell us like where we can contribute, not what I can get out of you. Even if it doesn't immediately convert, I've seen it convert in like three, four months. So if you do enough of that work, right, there'll be like a constant I mean, rolling. What, you, what that does is more just reminds the person that yeah. you, you exist. And yeah. Like, so even if they don't have, let's say, a need for a skill immediately, the next time they do, you're yeah. hoping they remember you before they remember anyone else. Yeah. That's one part of it. And I feel like other times it might just be a need of the moment. So like, yeah. that's happened to me a couple of times where I need something done. And it's just like, as, as a... In your daily life, there are so many things you need done, like okay, yeah. it's in the back of my head, but if someone reaches out to me where I know I can like use their help to get it done, right. that's just like bliss. Yeah. So, I yeah. think even staying on top of mind helps with like if someone they know needs something yeah. similar, yeah. then you come yeah. as like the first yeah. reference. So with a lot of clients, I have found that they actually don't want to share who their partners are oh, really? with other companies. <laughs> so they don't really refer so, you yeah, to other people. Like, yeah, they don't want to do that. So I have never really ever got a referral saying, hey, my friend who's at such and such brand needs help and you should go to them. I mean, very rarely, unless someone has switched. So the only time I've got like, you know, work from multiple brands to the same person is if they move to another company and then they called me and said, hey, help me out here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a little... Do you like feeling that like, that talent is my... No, only my find. Yeah, kind my of. find. Yeah, so that process of BD, I really had to learn. But I, I mean, if any young entrepreneur is watching or even really people who are trying to make it in the film industry, because when you're a writer, director or an author or whatever in the industry, you're also running your own company kind of in your like 
Priyanka Banerjee as a Correct. director is a company yeah. and then even for that like you know to reach out to producers to reach out to actors like whatever and say hey hi I exist it's just that you know and then they'll come to you when they have something uh, they think you fit yeah but yeah speaking of Priyanka Banerjee you won a film award. <laughs> um, yes. It was the People's Choice Award for Best Short Film in 2021 by Film Daily. Um, for starters, what was the feeling like? <laughs> I feel like everyone in this country has at some point watched Film Fair and like you said, I'm like excited for like all the dance performances and all yeah. like the films that are credited during that entire yeah. thing and like receiving one must feel Incredible. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty surreal to like hold it and all of that. And I think that was really cool. I also think I was so young. Like, I'm not that, I mean, that much older <laughs> than then. <laughs> but uh, I was 24 when I when I won it, which I feel in hindsight was a little young to appreciate it. And I'm saying that at 27. <laughs> like, so, but still, you know, I mean, in your 20s, it's so dynamic that every year you feel like you age like five years or something, right? Yeah. You learn so much. So I feel like back then I was excited, but you know, I was just a bit like, I didn't know quite what to make of it. And I feel like I gaslighted myself a little bit in the sense of like, uh, it's like a fluke or something like, you know, and that's what happens is if you've done a 15 year career and then you win it, you have that feeling of achievement for, for it, which I think I robbed myself of at that point. Now, when I look at it, I'm like, look, it was a really cool thing to have done. And, you know, it's great that I did that. And But I want to have a, I mean, I've never been, you know, there are all these great people you'll see, um, even at the Oscars and stuff, who come and win best documentary short, and then you see them 20 years later, you know. I don't want to be that person. Like, I was very clear that I don't want this to be the peak or the whatever. Like, course, it has yeah. to be, I want a filmography within which if there can be some awards, great. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to be that person who's made 10, 15 things you've watched and not just that one. Because the thing is, if you give it a lot of importance, it's very easy to be like, dude, I've arrived and, you know, I'm yeah. going to sit and chill. And that, that did happen also <laughs> for a bit. But then I, you know, kind of came back to the ground. <laughs> Which entrepreneurship does to you, I feel like, because, you know, your clients are very impressed initially. And then after a point, oh, it's like, money, like, exactly, exactly. And that award, while it's great, it doesn't pay anything. But it, I mean, it brought me a lot of opportunities. I'm sure I got Google and a lot of things because of that. Um, but the feeling is surreal. It's really cool. I unfortunately didn't have a ceremony because it was during the lockdown. Wow. So I just kind of, but I got the award, so yeah. I could still hold it. Two people graduated during lockdown. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously, and they didn't even do one later when things so got okay. They did one two years after. Oh God! <laughs> yeah. Oh, so y'all didn't go. I was in London. Okay. But um, yeah, I took a day off work. And like my parents were like, it's two years later, so they didn't come. So it's just... Wait, I have to go graduate. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know my manager of a day off because I need to go for my graduation ceremony. And he was like, what? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was nothing like what it would have yeah. been. But yeah. I think like because I was in London, I was like, okay, what? Right. Like, so right. it was nice-ish. <laughs> In your film, Devi, you also got to work with incredible people like Arjun. So how was that experience like and what was it working with her? Because I feel like, again, we've seen her on a lot of screens growing up yeah. and then being able to work with her to get that differentiation. How did that work? Yeah, again, very surreal and uh, I won't deny, I still get a little bit starstruck, you know, when I meet them because you've seen them on your screens growing up all your life and, you know, you just are so like, why are we in the same room, like, you know, breathing the same air? It's a little weird to reconcile that initially. I did feel that with her as well. And it was all, I mean, you know, I think he was my mentor and my producer, Ryan Stephen, who unfortunately passed away in 2021. But, um, you know, he basically was the entire, like, mastermind behind the cast. Because everyone asked me, like, how did you all get this cast? Because it's really, at that time, you know, now celebrities do shorts and all of that. But, you know, a few years ago, that was not really happening. It was very once in a while. Especially not, I feel, a celebrity of the stature of Kaju. Like, yeah, they yeah. would, you would not see them in a short film. And then because she said yes, I feel like everyone else kind of fell into place. And everyone else was also amazing. 
so yeah it was kind of a little bit scary and i didn't want to let her down you know i think it was that it was a two day shoot so not like we had very long um i kind of wish i mean because what happens is you can really build a rapport with actors if you work for a really long time together whereas two days is yeah. almost like shooting an ad or a music yeah. video or something and then they are off but uh, i was a little bit starstruck on day 1 and then i got into my mode by day 2 and i had i was like what did i do on day 1 i can't even remember and whatever it turned out okay yeah. but my producers like niranjana yanger and ryan stephen they really had to like swoop in and be like okay you know we will kind of help you stay upright through this because i feel like i was very intimidated you were yeah. also very young yeah right? yeah and exactly to work with such established actors and yeah. then also just be a little overwhelming yeah yeah and i think at that age which is a quality i really miss you know which i think everyone who's young should hold on to is i had this delusional quality mm-hmm. which was that yeah okay so why can't i direct kajol you know it was yeah. that kind of thing which now i feel i've become very realistic like if i look yeah. at things i'm like oh god you know i need to be careful of mm-hmm. and these are the pros and these are the cons and i'm thinking all that but at that age it was very like yeah it's my script and it's a great script and why should i not make it with her you know it was that kind of thing which i do miss i mean i try to bring it back actually because i know exactly how you feel yeah. i try to do that like like when we used to do this same podcast with this one we've had the founder of Shazam Yeah. Our cast meet at like Sir Martin Sorrell, right. and you know, just that time we kind of didn't care. We used to reach out to anyone and everyone. Yeah. Like it was yeah actually crazy that we were able to bring on some really top-notch yeah. um, guests. Which it's not like now the concept is different because it's more yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like even then we do like. I mean, there was like some level of delusion. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, but you should totally maintain it. I mean, I think that's what's important because the worst anyone can say is no, right? But yeah. like, you should still go and ask. I think that's a thing I try to remind my myself of. Same, I think like yeah. every, like every couple of times when we don't show back or something, yeah. it's very easy to be like, okay, that's not like we yeah. jump, but it's like we find like all it takes is one yes. Yeah, like, yeah. Wants so, like. We still reach out to like everyone we find interesting to be like, okay, like, hey, would you like come yeah. on and stuff like that? And I think the bigger like delusional fact in that part was like this is episode fifty one. Like we've mm. done a lot now. Yeah. Like being able to speak to someone is right. not as hard as it was in episode one. At the one, start, for yeah, example. yeah. But that was like episode negative. Like it was before this. <laughs> so like at that point, speaking to someone that had like. A very like established, long, successful career, yeah, and a very well-known company, and then trying to like play our games with them. We were like, <laughs> yeah, cool, like it's a fun form. Um, yeah, I don't think I thought that much into it. Yeah, but now it's like okay, like back then, how did we even like casually reach out to him? And we had like zero backing, and he was like, yeah, um, I think even he was like supportive, so. <laughs> Because otherwise, like, who's just gonna come up with like? Yeah, why not? I always feel like it's like for me personally, my way of like giving back. Because at some point, someone took a chance on me. Yeah. You know, when I was didn't know what I was doing, or I was trying some new venture. Like right now, I'm trying to start something uh, to do with like wedding films. Oh my god! Because everyone was telling me that why don't you do this and yeah. blah blah blah. And I was like, you know, and a lot of I think film people have this thing that I don't do weddings. You know, like it's that yeah. thing of like I'm not that. filmmaker yeah. but i was like dude nowadays weddings have become like those films are really cinematic and i don't mind having a separate company that does that and there's so much storytelling behind it yeah that. and and i think a lot of couples now i mean i myself i'm getting married and i i see oh, now that you. thank you <laughs> random uh, point in the <laughs> podcast but um, no i'm seeing a lot of them they they don't want the cookie cutter video yeah. they want something that tells their story and yeah like i was like why not but now in that i'll be a total amateur like when i'm yeah. going into it and i'll need some nice uh, you know unsuspecting couple <laughs> to be like okay make our wedding video all very um, confusing because you know with client with corporates there's so much of paperwork and you know there's so much <laughs> like with people when you're just going and telling someone I'll make your wedding film you know it's you're just dealing with personalities it's not really and i definitely consider it a very side side hustle right now so it's um, just a new place to get into so there again people have to take a chance on me you know I'm, i don't know everything i'm doing there so yeah so every business has obviously a bunch of challenges and for you i'm sure like As you mentioned earlier, like you've always had to kind of entrepreneurship has always come and grounded you because 
at some point, even if there is like you know an achievement and everything, you still need to continue bringing money in. Yeah. But what is, for example, one challenge that you face often, and how do you like get through it? So one is uh, business development because I feel like a large part of the business is around me. Yeah. right because it it builds around me and that's very common with film production houses because i mean karan johar for example with dharma right now he's such a huge selling point for dharma right it's around him he's of course at a yeah. totally different scale and level but if and and he has he very smartly hired you know an apurva mehta to be the ceo of dharma so that he doesn't have to be that and he can go out and do a lot of other things so i look at my career very similarly because when i as a person as a personality have an achievement like devi which had nothing to do with leo girl leo girl greatly benefits from it and it gets a lot of credibility the one challenge that's happened and because i don't because for so long i had this passive sort of approach and it's balancing the two because like like right now i basically directed something in 2023 for it was an anthology of short films which will be out in march i'll send you guys a link um, it's uh, for paramount plus right so it's an international project now and i had to give it a lot of focus because it's my first time working abroad with you know people uh, that are in other countries and all of that now that took away time from being able to build a clientele in 2023 and be able to meet new people do any of that so that balance is what i find the problem and i try to in the in the individual roles whichever members i have of my team i try to empower them but they can't be me yeah and because the inception came from me a lot of the relationships with clients are from me so that you know process of replicating yourself or completely creating a process where it can happen independent of you i think that is my challenge very often long winding road but i reach the answer yes. <laughs> uh, so we're going to play our next game which is two truths and a lie uh we want to learn a little bit more about your journey with your over productions whether it's achievements or challenges the idea is that you give us three statements from which two are true and one is a lie And then I'm just gonna have to guess which one is the lie. Okay, cool. Um, so I didn't name Leo Girl myself. Um, I direct every project Leo Girl gets, and the core team we have is just four people. I'm gonna say that your core team is not just four people. Like the lie is the four. I'm gonna say that you direct every project yourself is a lie. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> it can't work like that there are yeah, the directors yeah. because uh, otherwise it will just be like the priyanka show which is kind of something yeah yeah it can't work like that and yeah 100% so that's that's yeah. the lie uh, the other two are true and we just even today have only four people so everyone has that you work with us all is a freelancer yeah. yeah it helps me just full disclosure keep cost low yeah. you know i want to like you have to work with pressure ideas anything yeah new ideas Just yeah like, our kind of industry is like that yeah. i feel and if i ever reach a point see there was a very serious point where i'm sorry if i if i've stopped the flow of the game or mm-hmm. something okay cool yeah. cool okay yeah. awesome. i'm supposed to explain yeah. my yeah. thing yeah. right okay cool um no there was a serious point where like in the first few years like i only registered it as a proper company in 2018 So before that whatever I was doing was just like random and whatever and then in 2018 I was like I need to run this like a company and not be all over the place. Um when I did that and when I kind of put the team together I kind of realized that this is like this works this kind of really tight format because initially we didn't know how often we'll have projects what kind of workload we're going to have does it make sense to have that many people on our roles it it didn't make sense for me at the time and i've realized now that if we reach a point where we really have that kind of um you know uh, th- th- i mean the kind of i i think massive projects in terms of needing a team that large or whatever on on our roles i can do that but i don't want to do it until it's not absolutely needed and you know just trim the fat like it was that that was the intention and i saw an example of like instagram having just 13 employees before they were acquired by facebook i was like okay that's my example <laughs> if anyone asks me why don't you have more people because yeah. this works like for us yeah. so far that's Completely that's makes sense so who makes up those four employees like yeah. do you have enough Yeah so there's uh, I'm one of the four so it's just three actually uh but basically one is a producer he's like an in-house sort of guy who handles all the logistics of shoots one's an accounts person and one is a client servicing sort of person who does the emails with clients back and forth of 
whatever they require and that's just the core everybody else that comes in is a freelancer but the thing is i would easily say there are 10 15 people who work with us so often they may as well be employees um but a lot of creative people they like the freedom to go anywhere they want and not have to come to a I myself don't want to work nine to five at at my own company, so <laughs> I can't expect other people yeah. to do that. And the first year I started it as a company, that was what I was saying earlier. That I got into this trap of I need to get investment, I need to do this that because I thought that's what you do when you run a company. And a couple of these forums came to me being like, oh, you're a women entrepreneur, you should apply for this, you should apply for that. And the thing is, I went for those things and I met other. women entrepreneurs and that was amazing i mean i'm calling them women entrepreneurs but that was the yeah. point of the forum so i met other entrepreneurs and i realized and even i i went to niti aayog in delhi they had a you know women transforming india fund because i was doing diversity and inclusion related work so that was great but the other people i met their whole life depended on that idea and they really wanted like that was their plan a right and you know fair enough the people who even got that it was their plan a and i realized my plan a is to be a filmmaker and to be a director and my company is a is a great thing that i run but it's not the plan a it's yeah. it's actually you know sort of in many ways it gives me an opportunity to direct more to have a greater portfolio all of that but i have to very much also focus on a film career so i don't want the responsibility of investment uh because the minute people come in and you know want to initially i'm sure the money is exciting for anybody but then i need to have a plan in place for how to use it and then that's when i like extricated myself from that and i was like i'm just going to focus on working as much as possible and building a good enough portfolio that you know you know it is just a successful company that's what i want to run and i'm happy staying like a small medium sized company which is a very difficult thing to explain to some people because you know they are also like they like why don't you expand why don't you get bigger you have uh, these kind of corporate clients you can really if you have that vision but i feel like once i've made a couple of features and you know i i feel like i'm at an established place as a director um or even along the way i'll 100% look for someone to take over this in an in an execution role um and give them a lot of power you know which is the karan johar dharma example <laughs> yeah obviously makes a lot of sense i feel like even i agree with you that not everyone goes to just make a large company yeah um to a certain extent i feel the same way like i don't want to bring in an investor and like scale up my business i want to grow it and if it like whatever it grows so it's not like i'm opposed to it growing to a large company yeah yeah but, but i don't want to yeah like i don't want to bring in investment to do it and then be answer to someone like i like to be honest having full control as well yeah 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 and i think you have to go back to like the first principle um is it what it's is what is the thing that elon musk uses <laughs> is it first principle thinking i don't know how what it's called but no. it's like going back and back and back to like the core distilling it to the core purpose basically um which i don't know what it's called but or maybe we call it socratic questioning yourself or something like that but the idea is to basically just go back to the start and for me it was to just make a lot of great pieces of work that's the purpose right so i can do that at this scale i don't want to do anything more my idea is not to have you know 100 people that i don't know what to do with you know like that that's yeah. not going to yeah that's just going to be difficult and hard and i don't i'm not good at that so that's yeah yeah i get that like i think even for me like The number of employees never excited. It's not like yeah. oh, that if you have hundred or thousand employees, yeah. that means your company is that much bigger, or that much yeah. better. Like that, yeah. I don't correlate it at least that yeah. way. Yeah. But um, yeah, who named your company? If I want to know, do you guys want to guess? I've mentioned the your person. Sibling. Your brother. My mom. Oh. <laughs> It's a really silly story. I mean, I don't even know if it's worth being on a business podcast, but <laughs> I'll tell you. Me so had a, I have a name in my business story about two episodes ago. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, but this one is really silly. So anyway, I'll tell you all. So basically, <laughs> I went all through my life thinking I was a Cancerian. <laughs> And halfway through, someone told me, "No, you're a Leo." And I was like, yeah. "What?" <laughs> like i don't know what rock i was living under and i realized i was leo and uh, my mom said yeah like that explains a lot <laughs> because you know and then she said you're like and then she said that you should call your company leo girl oh. 
and i said it's such a cute name and at i think 18 19 it seemed like a good idea <laughs> and then it became like it it became the thing because then my, my clients knew me that way so i had still haven't figured out anything better to call it so it's just leo girl only now and now i'm happy with it now it's just like yeah, it's it's a quirky cute, cute name yeah. you know so it's fine yeah and you have a story behind it so yeah yeah all right so let's do that class um so this game is basically where we're going to give you three hypothetical situations in each situation there are two things that are going great which are the green flags and one right. thing that's not so great that flags okay and at the end of the statements we we'll, you need to choose which of these three situations you would rather be in okay as so a situation one is you get to work on a huge volume of production a bigger production house is interested in acquiring you leo bird productions however For your entire career, you are only recognized for one piece of work. Hmm. Situation two is Leo Productions launches a creative incubator program to nurture emerging talent in the film industry. Leo Gold Productions boasts international with its work, but you never receive an award again. And situation three is Leo Gold Productions becomes a talent magnet, attracting top-notch directors, writers, and actors. It's known for producing content that addresses important societal issues. But due to certain controversies online, your project with your dream brand falls through. Oh, okay. I think situation two. Yeah, because um, I think I already have a pretty cool award, <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> like even the day I die, I can be like Filmfare Award winner, Priyanka <laughs> Banerjee. So that's done. Um, yeah, hundred percent. Because there's so many talented people I know. Christopher Nolan is just about to get like I think his first Oscar or something, or like his second. So, and he's. I mean, does it matter? We don't yeah, really care. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it's that I think situation two because the rest sounds great. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, international sure working and an incubator program should be interesting to see. It. Yeah. So our final segment is the rapid fire, self-explanatory. Right. I'll ask you questions and you have to give us quick and rapid cool. answers. Cool. Cool. Just like current events. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, how many days of leave have you taken in the last year? Oh God! Wait, it has to be quick. Um, <laughs> maybe thirty. Uh, did you ever question whether it was worth it? Yeah, I no, and I didn't. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were just placed from where you have walked. Mount Titlis oh. in Switzerland. Okay. <laughs> I've answered emails on top of Mount Titlis. <laughs> Your proudest moment with Leo Girl Productions. Uh, the day we did the Google campaign and our first Nike campaign. That was the first big brand I got. Yeah. Oh, okay. What was the one time you felt that you let Leo Girl Productions down? Last year, actually, because I feel like I got a little too choosy with what we were doing, and um, I realized I should just say yes to more things and figure out how it'll happen along the way. Because some people don't knock twice, you know. Like when they knock once, you have to take it then, and uh, you know, because you read a lot of the stuff about it's also about what you say no to, and I took that too seriously. I feel like. <laughs> In 2023, and then I was like, "Listen, you can't do that. Yeah, like, you have to yeah. take everything that comes your way." And that is my like mantra for 2024: just say yes to everything, figure it out later. How will you do it? Like that. One company that you really want to work with? Um, Facebook or oh, Instagram? Yeah, which is the same thing. Yeah, now? Meta. Yeah, Meta. Yeah. Meta. Yeah. Uh, what is the scrappiest thing that you've done to build your business? Everything. I feel like I've picked up equipment, and I've picked up sofas and tables, and I've placed them on stages, and I've done all that. Like I've done all the physically laborious things you can think of. Yeah, which I don't know if it's jugadu, but I was like, if I can save on getting two people to do it, like if I can save on paying yeah, two people to do this, I'll just do it myself. Yeah, like hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Uh, your emotion when you re- when you were recognized as the top hundred women transforming India. This belief and imposter syndrome. <laughs> you talk like a true entrepreneur. <laughs> What uh, did you do with your first profit? Probably ate something at a nice restaurant <laughs> and didn't care about the bill. Yeah. I think so far you've got me two answers, right? Which is either eat a fancy meal or come um, back in the corner. Yeah. Right. We've done this question, I think, at least five, six times now. Those are the only two answers. Yeah. Yeah. What else will you do? Also, you don't want to spend that much of it. <laughs> I think so. I think we are because of what are you, what are you expecting? Like we yeah. went on a night night on the town and all that. None of that. I think it's like let's go eat somewhere nice and celebrate. Yeah. Yeah. Which is also like not that massive of an expense. 
Consider yeah, that. yeah. No, I no, probably no, put yeah. the rest back. Yeah. Probably. So I don't just remember. Like a nice meal is cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which hobby of yours did your work help? Oh God, this will just get depressing. Um, I still really enjoy dancing, okay. which I think I really stopped. And I started restarted doing it. Yeah. It's really funny because I have an Apple Watch, right? And you have some other friends who are on the yeah. watch with you. And they're like, "Have you joined a dance class?" <laughs> because we get like dance notifications. I'm like, oh, "I'm just dancing in my room." <laughs> but I switch on the dancing thing anyway, as it's a workout. Because I realize I will not have time to go and you know yeah, go down to yeah, some yeah. class. I'm just going to dance in my room for 40 minutes, and yeah. it's a workout. It's Is not it bad. Up on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found a couple of the YouTube ones. I just make up my own choreography. Yeah. You know, I used to dance like with groups and stuff, so I can do choreography. So that really got killed. I think the general stress of achievement and all that just killed one of those things because it was like it's thirty minutes to go to the class, then it's yeah. thirty minutes before that to change. Then when you so basically you've lost two and a half hours of your day, so forget it, right? Yeah. And that was really something that brought me joy. So books or podcasts? Books. I got a notebook. Notebook. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Morning person. And your favorite social media platform? It's currently deleted, but Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, that concludes the rapid fire segment, bringing us almost to the end of our conversation. We ask every guest to ask our next guest a question. So we're gonna ask you, or rather, our previous guest is gonna ask you a question. Building in startups is always about you know building a big dream and a big vision. Um, but sometimes you end up with multiple visions and multiple dreams over a long period of time. So what would you like to be remembered for? That's such a nice question. Uh, I would like to be remembered for putting some really great stories out in the world that made people feel seen. I think that's uh, what I'd like to be remembered for. And just generally having been like a kind, fair person to work for and work with. I think that's important to me. Yeah. I also feel like for you, when you have multiple visions, you just start accounting for inspiration. Yeah, I think so. so. You know, <laughs> and the wedding. That's so amazing. No, no. I think the three so things are part of Leo Girl. I know. I know. The wedding could also be another division. No, but I realized that, look, I'm probably, I don't know what's going to happen with it. It's yeah. really one of those jump off. It's one of those say yes and figure it out later things. So I'm just doing it as a totally separate thing. I made the logo myself. It was really fun to go back to that, you yeah. know. We are just like on can <laughs> to figure something out and asking friends if they'll do things for free. And you know, that it's a fun space to be in. Yeah. So yeah. But yeah, that concludes our final. Yay! Segment. Awesome. <laughs> uh, well thank done. Thank you so much for coming on. It's yeah. been an absolute pleasure to learn more about the industry and everything that you've done so far. And we're thank excited. I hope you, you enjoyed. Yeah. yeah, I had a great time. I, I'm sad it's over. I thought we were going to talk more. <laughs> you can always come back. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We can do like a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Done, I hope. It's called Shadi Cinematic, by the way, if oh, anyone yeah, wants up. to call us. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have anything ready, but you can call us. <laughs>